Okay, um, as you can see, our basement is under renovation, and today I'm going to show you how to make a beautiful tile look design by staining concrete. So, as you can see, this is a regular crappy old, really from crappy shoes as well, crappy old concrete floor. It's got some imperfections. You know what? Imperfections give it a little bit of character. If it's a really big imperfection, you just fill it up with a little bit of concrete, and you'll be okay. Just patch it up. Okay, as you can see, I started doing the stenciling over here. And you can make some beautiful designs. And most of this over here towards the edging over here has already been done. There's a little section over here which I just painted. And what I use is epoxy from Lowe's. Basically this stuff right here. Uh, epoxy seal, okay? That's basically like gray epoxy that you put down on a concrete floor. And what I do is I use it as a base. Now, concrete stain actually stains concrete, but if you have a substrate like this and you don't have a really pretty concrete floor that's been painted a zillion times over, you could use it the epoxy. I've had good luck with that so far, and then you just stain right over it. So how do we make beautiful designs? Well, I don't like rectilinear or square slabs. I've done that before, and it takes a little bit of work because you have to make everything line up, and usually walls are not really too, too, too linear. So what I want to do is add a little bit of character to the floor. So I want to put some curves in there. So what we do is we take some kind of focal point of the room over here, something that I can attach a string to right here. And I just take the string and for instance over here, I'll attach my pencil to it. Just wrap it around a few times. Okay. And then you just make a line, you make curves. Okay. Okay, as you can see, there's a whole bunch of surface preparation that goes ahead of concrete staining. Uh, one of the things I got was a, uh, picked up a used Metabo angle grinder. Uh, you're going to need a strong one to get rid of the bumps and the asperities on there. And what I did was you got to get one of these real nasty mofos. Okay, this over here is a diamond impregnated wheel over here. This grinds concrete as if it was butter. Yes. Hard to believe, but it does it. It takes the bumps out, takes all the little ridges out, and takes more out than you want to, than you want to at times. And so the key to this is concrete dust is really bad for you, all right? We're inside of the house over here. I think my wife would probably kick my butt if I got a whole bunch of dust and smoke all over the place and stuff that certainly isn't good for you hanging out in the basement. So what do we do? I got one of these Herzog uh, shrouds over here off eBay. It's like around 25 bucks. You can off Amazon too for a few dollars more. And what it is, it's a little shroud over here and it keeps the dust in check with these little bristles over here. It kind of like forms a seal against the concrete, uh, blows it all around, and then it gets sucked out into this. What, what is this going to attach to? I have this attached to a long hose here. And what we do is this happens to be a pool hose. Uh, it looks pretty long here because I used it to stretch all across the basement. And then I have it connected up to a dust catcher. Dust catcher is basically a bucket. <laughs> that swirls air around it. You put you put water on the bottom, and <coughs> as the concrete dust gets swirled, uh, it kind of sticks to the water and clog up your filter. And it goes to the filter, which is basically a wet vac. Then from that, I don't let it go out into the air either. I just have a hose and let it go outside. <coughs> That's the way to try and do it without the least amount of dust. I know I'm sounding like I got an overdose of dust here, but actually it's a cold I'm getting over. So as you can see, that little, uh, you only put in about an inch or two of water on the bottom. You can see it c collected all that corroded concrete dust. Attach it to the pole over there. Put the string all the way back here. I put the beam down. I line up the string with the beam. So when it's lined up, I know that I could, it's, it's emanating from that central point. And I'll just take a string. A piece of, piece of uh, pencil and I'll just draw a straight line right here and it gives me an automatic route line. Do it on both sides. Very easy to do. 
very primitive and the best part of this is nothing has to line up because you're not doing anything rectilinear so you just do a whole bunch of designs like that on the floor you stencil it out and after that you just take your uh, concrete stain and you start staining so let's try it out Also, whenever you do any grinding, you also want to use a, uh, uh, a respirator over here just to be on the safe side. So that's my connection. That's my network. I connect the uh, angle grinder <coughs> up to a hose. goes into the dust catcher over there. dust catcher goes into the wet back. It goes out the door. That's the least amount of dust possible.
Okay, let's go downstairs and take a look at the final product. That's just an LED candle. I like LEDs. Lead you the way to the dungeon over here. <clears throat> here we go. Floor's all done, all dried up. We got our three bar stools there. <coughs> Acquired from sidewalk shopping, of course, because I told you I'm cheap. A little bit of paint, a little bit of cleanup. Beautiful and comfortable. There's my 36 inch round Amazon table. Uh, it comes with two posts, bar height post and a regular post. And make sure you put Christmas lights someplace inside the man cave because Christmas lights mean party. I got the LED ones from Lowe's. It's only like $12.99 for, for the string. Gives you a little bit of added effect. There's my old TV. I put uh, Google Chromecast on it to make sure I can get all the smart channels from the Wi-Fi. Works perfectly. The TV is about a dozen years old. It's good enough for down here. There's my torture rack, and of course, a little centerpiece over here with the fake uh, vent. That's a uh, full fireplace. I love these things. These are made by Duraflame. They got 3D patented technology to make it look like there's flames before and behind the wood. So it's pretty cool. We put that uh, little vent in there to give uh, people a little bit of guesswork when they come in here. I just tell them it's hot, don't touch it. Okay, as we go in here, there's a whole bunch of LED lighting in here. <coughs> it gives you a nice, like, warm, intense light. And you got space for a little table, whatever else you want to put there. There's our wall breaker. It consists of a shower curtain from that you go order from China on eBay. It makes it look like whitewashed wood. It covers up all the junk on the other side of the room. And then uh, that's it. It's really easy to do. I did one section at a time. There's no way I could have done a whole basement in one time. Because number one, I don't have those blocks of time. I'm a working man. And secondly, my wife would go crazy by moving all the personal stuff around. So I did section by section. It works really easily. Just plan it out. I get everything on here section by section. It takes a little while, but you know what? Take your time. It's, it's kind of like art. You're having fun doing it. It doesn't have to be perfect. Life is imperfect. Stone is imperfect. Concrete design is imperfect. And you know what? Sometimes imperfect is fun. So let's see, maybe a bear rug down there. Who knows what else we'll put down there. But you know what, for a little man cave, it's fine. And don't forget the lights. Have fun.